Uh, I want to say welcome everybody to our brand new show here. And uh, my first guest is the Honorable Councilman Curtis Jones Jr. What's up, Councilman? Oh, you. You know I follow you on Facebook, Twitter, That's what's up. And Instagram. That's you, what's up. You're my man, 50 Grand. <laughs> so, Councilman, tell me some of the things going on. I mean, you got a lot of things happening right now within the 4th District, um, which is our district that we live in. And, you know, you, 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 uh, let me say this. I commend you. The, the, the scale of our environment has changed so much. And we thank you from the solar panel trash cans to the bus benches, shelters, to the senior homes, from Parkside to Winfield. And uh, things are just constantly growing from the new development and recreational centers we're about to have. But we have bigger issues that we're dealing with right now. Tell me some of the things that's really on your mind. Well, for your listeners, uh, a council person <clears throat> does three things. Mm-hmm. We write laws. We are lawmakers. So we just passed a law called Good Cause, a B Cause. Some of the people that were at Penn Wynn, which is an apartment building, you and I from the neighborhood know, 200 people mm. uh, were kicked out without notice. Right. Weren't given their deposits nor security back and just told to leave. Mm. And so whenever something like that happens, you deal with the individual incident, but you also try to pass a law that changes that paradigm. From happening again. Yep. So that's the first thing we do. Second thing we do is appropriations, which is how much money does each department get, whether the police versus education versus how much uh, snow removal costs. Okay. So we appropriate all of that. The third thing is potholes. Oh, yes. We fix potholes. So when the street department won't, we will call to make sure they do. I got a question for you. You know, you guys fix potholes. Mm-hmm. What about people's cars? Because, you know, my car got damaged. Mm-hmm. You know, I cracked my room. My rooms are very expensive on that car. And I, I had to come out my pocket for 600 bucks. Like, And I wanted to go back and take a picture of the pothole. The next day it was covered. I was I was so mad because I wanted to try to get my money back, but the next day I went back, man, I'm telling you, it caused so much damage to my car. Like, I tried to avoid it. It was so wide. I believe that somebody actually moved the, the barrier from in front of it, and when I, hit the, when I hit the hole, somebody else was like, yo, you're number 10. So, <laughs> whenever we have a bad storm, potholes follow. It's mm-hmm. just the way it is. Mm-hmm. The salt erodes the asphalt and ergo a pothole. Now, when that happens to you, there is re- recourse. You can go to risk management okay. down in the MSB building and mm. file a claim. You are supposed to take a picture of the pothole, show the damage of your car, and then you know you have a you have. How long? How long would the claim take for? A long time. That, that's why I just oh, went and paid time. for it. Long time. I'm not even going to hold you, and I'm never going to lie to you. Right. They design it to be long, so you forget about it. Mm. But that's when you should be dogged and relentless and get your money because mm. it was caused by a, a lack of uh, maintenance in our roads. Now, let me ask you another question. I know you guys had talked about in city council the bail hearings, uh, something along that lines. Explain to my listeners a little bit about what that was about. So bail was the greatest hustle ever created. Mm-hmm. Um, in the English times, it was designed to make sure that if you destroyed Mrs. O'Leary's cow Mm -hmm. that you would show up for court and you would put up some monetary um, security to make sure you came. That was adapted in the United States in the uh, prison industrial complex to say if you don't want to stay in jail until time of your trial Mm -hmm. you're going to put up this bread in order to go home. So that turned into a cottage industry Bell's bondsmen took off, and millions, if not billions of dollars later, people are stuck in jail because they don't have $1,000 bail. Right, Now, let me tell you how crazy that is. You are in jail for a $1,000 bail, which is actually 10% of it, is $100. It's $100. It costs $130 a day to incarcerate. So the city of Philadelphia, instead of letting you go a ride for $100, we're keeping you there six months, a half a year, right. at $130 a day. That does not make sense. And you and we went to public Mathematically, school. Mathematically, that don't we make sense. We went to public school. Yeah. That don't make sense. So we Excuse went me. and started researching it, uh, Joey, and found out that Washington, D.C. has not had cash bail for 20 years. Wow. And everybody said, oh, if you do this, crime's going to go up. 
the roof is going to fall down. But well, D.C. had major crimes. Yeah, major crimes. Yeah. Crimes actually went down. The way they did that was, yes, we were released. Me and you, we went to an Eagles game. Mm-hmm. We bet. I lost. We fight. We get both put in jail. The Eagles jail. Yeah, the Eagles jail. Yeah, they got a jail yeah, underneath yeah, the stadium. Yeah, no doubt. We're, we're the judge. Uh, we're the judge. That's right. And so you're there, and all of a sudden now you're there for um, 30 days before the trial mm-hmm. at $100 a day. Right. When, you know what? That was a one-time occurrence. Me and you are actually friends. The likelihood of me and you going to a game and fighting again is it's zero. Yeah. So why do I have you in jail? Maybe you need some anger management. Maybe you need the 12 steps to stop drinking. Maybe I do. Right. I don't know. But put the condition on that for release. Mm-hmm. You go get some help, Joey. Curtis. Go take care of what is the causal issue. The issue that caused to. it. Correct. And so that is what Washington, D.C. does. We're going to let you out, but you're going to go get some help. And you're not allowed to go to that bar. So it's mandatory. The help that yes. they give is mandatory. So right. it's like if, if once we let you out, you have to... You you Take have care, to get your yeah, life right. Yeah, you got yeah, you got you gotta talk to the mic a little closer, I guess is what she's saying. So I'm raw. I keep this thing real raw. Mm-hmm. I was trying not to expose it, but you know, the producer of the show is like you gotta talk a little bit into the mic because your levels is probably a little low. I know this is an uncomfortable situation for That's real fine. men, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. <laughs> no me too. No. Yeah, no me too. Not me. <laughs> but no, honestly, so I mean it's like this is a, this, so when they release you it's like a mandatory program where you got to go get some help. You need to go to the rehab. You need to do these things because we're going to let you out of jail. That's that's the offset balance. So let's make the situation worse. Me and you in jail for a beer fight that we didn't mean because we friends. Right. In the meantime of that six months, you lost your job. You lost your apartment. Right. Your baby mama's sick of this. Yeah. She done separated from you. This is the third time. Third time. So now your life is in shambles in even more of a desperate situation when you get out because life has turned on its ear because you were in jail and couldn't handle your business. What sense does that make? So if you are not a danger to yourself right. or others, then there should be conditional release. Now, wow, that's crazy. I got another thing I want to talk about, which is something that's really dear to me. I know when I worked for your office, I was like one of the only employees to ever testify in city council. That's what I was told anyway. You know, you're the first employee to ever testify in city council. Well, it was very dear to my heart. The ATV situation. I want to get into that because I'm president of ATV Coalition and, you know, I still ride. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love I love.